how's it going uh, and welcome back to the channel. If you watched the, the last video that I put out, I showed you what I wear when I go out in the mountains for a, a dander in the winter. Uh, and today I want to show you what goes in my rucksack and what comes with me. First thing you're going to need is a bag to put everything in. I have this wee Osprey 33 litre bag which holds pretty much everything that I need for it for a day out. Uh, and I actually use it sometimes in the summer as well for an overnight stay. You can get a lot of, lot of things into this bag. Don't need to, to have a fancy walking rucksack to, to go out and enjoy it. One of the kids school bags or just a, a wee backpack will, will do you grand. Um, the only thing that, that these have over the likes of school bags and that is uh, a bit more mesh for ventilation uh, and hip belts. Uh, if you're starting to put a bit of weight in that in it, it can just help distribute the weight uh, a lot nicer for you. So decent wee investment uh, into a good rock sack will, will make a, a world of difference for you. The first thing that goes into my rock sack, no matter what the conditions are, is a first aid kit. My personal first aid kit would be a lot smaller than this, uh, but as you know, I'm a mountain leader uh, and I take groups out in the, in the hills, so I'm prepared for, for the group as well as myself. One thing that I will recommend carrying in your first aid kit is these wee survival bags. They're like plasticky kind of material. Um, and if you have an injury or something happens to you or whoever you're walking with, they can jump inside that. And talking more about layers, it just adds a, another layer of protection. Um, and with it being like a plastic material, you can generate quite a lot of heat inside them. Uh, so that goes in and just lives at the bottom of my bag. Like I said guys, I work as a, a mountain leader and I've got a, a group shelter. If I'm going out on my own uh, in winter conditions, I always throw it in the bag. And if I'm out with a group winter or summer, I take this with me as well. Um, I think it's a, a really valuable piece of kit if you're out in a snowstorm or a whiteout, uh, really high winds or anything like that and you just want a wee bit of shelter, um, definitely worth firing this out. If I'm out for an overnight camp uh, on my own or that, I won't bother bringing it because if I need that shelter I can fire my tent up really really quickly. You don't need one of these. Um, to get out and enjoy walking in, in the winter, but definitely something to think about, having some sort of, of way of protecting yourself from wind and stormy conditions. The next most important piece of kit that I'll carry with me is a map and a compass. I've already got this folded on the area that I plan to walk. Before I set off, I'm gonna show this to my partner and let her know my intended route and how long it should take me to complete that. I'm going to give her cutoff points so if I'm not in contact with you by 4 or 5 p.m. whatever my walk is then she needs to start raising the alarm that, that something's gone wrong. If you need to get in touch with, with Mountain Rescue what you need to do is dial 999 ask for the police and then ask for mountain rescue on top of that and that'll get you through to the, the right people but hopefully it'll never come to that but it's it's always worth letting somebody know where you're going your intended route uh, and how long it should take you just on that then it's really important if you tell somebody your intended route but then you decide to go on and oh, i'll just go to that next peak or i'll just go over there and it doesn't look that far uh, visually but the ground and everything can add so many different factors that may just extend your your journey a bit too long um, if you haven't mapped it uh, and decided that you're doing that before before you head and um, so yeah before I go out I always look at the the journey that I plan to take have a couple of backups just in case but 
tend to stick to the, the main one that, that I set out to do. I've also got a spare compass that I keep inside like a wee foam pouch just to protect it. Um, and this never sees the light of day because hopefully my, my compass that I use all the time works. Most of my walks and hikes uh, in the winter, I like to, to start just before sunrise um, and finish probably in the dark as well. We don't get that much light up here. Um, I think sunrise at the minute is like half eight in the morning and sunset's about four, four thirty. So yeah, it's not a, a big window for walking in. But even if I do set out to walk in daylight hours only, I'll always carry a torch with me. So here I've got my head torch and it's fully charged, ready to go, even as I say, if I don't intend to, to use it. Things can change and things can happen uh, on the hills. It may be a lot harder underfoot uh, going and it may extend your walking time. So having some way of navigating in the dark and getting you back, back home safely is key. Um, I really don't recommend relying on foam torches and stuff like that. Uh, doesn't need to be a head torch. You can use these wee handheld torches which are brilliant. A head torch is just a, a game changer really. It's on your head. It leaves your hands free for scrambling or manoeuvring over loose ground. But also wherever you look that torch follows you and just makes navigating through rough terrain really easy. So they live quite close uh, and handy at the top of the bag. And with that, I also carry a spare torch and spare batteries for both of my torches. Out in winter conditions again, batteries really, really struggle with cold conditions. Um, so once we're, we're down into them really cold uh, conditions with high winds uh, these batteries aren't going to last too long at all so I would expect it to be replacing batteries uh, on a journey if I'm out for a long period of time in the dark. The next bits of kit to go into my bag then will be my waterproofs. So on the previous video I showed you all my waterproof layering system that I have. Um, so a coat, my trousers and gaiters. So they all live separately in their own dry bag and you can see that squashes down to a pretty decent size. Um, with these dry bags I've just wrote on them as well what's in it. So uh, in horrible conditions you can just open your bag, see exactly what's in each dry bag uh, and get it on. The next thing is my spare clothes. So if I get absolutely soaking wet or I'm cold, I've got more layers to be adding on. So like I said before, spare hat, spare gloves, a buff and a couple of tops. And again, they go into their own dry bag. You can get really expensive fancy dry bags. Um, but these wee cheap ones from Caramore that I get from Sports Direct have never let me down. Um, and they're only a couple of quid for a bag as well. So I've got absolutely hundreds of these just lying about. Um, so yeah, a great wee investment for keeping your kit dry uh, and separate it in your bag. I don't actually drink that much water when I'm out in the hills, uh, especially in winter. I find it really, really hard to to be drinking cold, freezing cold water. But I do carry at least a litre with me and that allows me to boil it up uh, and make a, a coffee on the go. So I'll carry my mug and a, and a couple of these wee coffee bags. You don't need a big fancy jet boil like this. Uh, although this wee zip, uh, I think it's like 70 or 80 pound at the minute. They're, they're right down in price and it's perfect. It boils enough water for, for two cups of coffee out of it. You can also put a rolled up um, boil in the bag meal as well. Fits nicely into the, the wee zip. 
so yeah, I'll I'll carry my my Nalgene full of water so I can make a brew anytime I'm feeling cold or at lunchtime when it when I stop. And because I've got my jet boil with me, I also carry a nice warm meal. Uh, going into the bag today is some couscous uh, that I can boil up. I think I've already made a video on making some jet boil meals with the couscous. So I'm going to bring that with me. A foam mat, something to sit on whenever I stop. Um, sitting on the freezing cold ground can quickly take the temperature out of your body. Um, I've got a wee thermarest. This is actually for when I go camping. But I use this as a, a wee seat pad as well uh, whenever I go out for just a day walk. It'll go on last uh, and just across the top. Next is some bits of kit that I carry with me uh, that might not necessarily be essential or, or necessary for what you plan to do. Um, but for me pushing on a wee bit, uh, this is definitely kit that I that I take. This kit is pretty much the basics and essential kit that you should be carrying with you for a day out in the hills. A pair of ski goggles. When I was up on Sleeve Burner, the winds picked up really high uh, and I could hardly see with the, the snow drift uh, and the high winds blasting me in the face. Popped on a, a pair of ski goggles and it just allows you to see these ones here have a, like an orangey yellow filter lens on them uh, and that gives you definition in the snow that you're walking on in white out conditions where you can't actually see that much and there, there's no sun. It allows you to see what you're walking on and any wee hidden dips or uh, crevices or, or anything like that. Crampons. A hot topic at the minute uh, on the, the forum. No, you don't necessarily need crampons to climb Berna or Donard, but they are going to make your life a lot more easier and a lot more enjoyable. Not everyone has mountaineering boots. The boots that I showed you before, my, my B2 boots, um, not everyone has them. But I do recommend investing in a wee set of micro spikes um, or yak track. Um, what they do is they elasticate onto the bottom of your boot and they're like a smaller version of crampons. And the people that I've seen sliding, trying to get off the, the mountain, with a set of micro spikes on the bottom of their boots would have had a totally different experience. They would have been able to, to walk up and down, no problem at all. I'm actually heading out tomorrow uh, for a big day in the mountains and these are going to definitely go in the bag um, for some of the stuff that I plan to do. I keep my crampons in this wee bag just so that they're not going to tear any of the kit that's in my bag. Next on my bag goes my ice axe. Uh, this is a wee walking axe um, which I can use walking up hills I just keep it on the, the high side of the mountain it's pretty much like using walking poles but um, it's a bit more safe if I take a slip or a fall on icy or snowy conditions um, I can self arrest uh, on this uh, and stop me sliding down the mountain so if you don't have an ice axe I definitely recommend a set of walking poles and with these walking poles, if you take the, the covers off the end, they've got like wee diamond tips um, or carbon tips, I think they are, uh, which just penetrate uh, and grip to the, the ice really nice. They're all adjustable and everything, so you can set them up to the, the height that you need. It gives you a lot more stability when you're crossing slippery terrain. Um, it helps balance you as well. So... Yeah, I don't use walking sticks that much in summer conditions, but nearly all the time uh, in winter. So yeah, definitely, definitely bring a, a set of walking poles with you if you can. Guys, that's 
pretty much everything that goes into my rucksack for any day out in the mountains in winter conditions. If you carry anything differently, or maybe it's given you a bit of food for thought for what you should be carrying, let us know in the comments below uh, and we can have a chat about it. Thanks very much for watching guys, see you soon. Thank you.